Based on what Charlie said, I predict that we will continue to see that the dates for these 83 categories will continue moving forward through the summer, though in July, there may be slower movement. I hope you're ready. I've got lots of news to cover today. The State Department's Bureau of Consular Affairs held their monthly chat with Charlie and discussed the June Visa Bulletin to see what sort of movement we can expect to see in the coming months. The Bureau of Consular Affairs also held a special live stream with the resident U.S. visa expert to discuss the backlog and what steps they are taking to resolve it. Finally, the June visa bulletin has been released, and we can expect to see significant movement across the employment and family-based categories. We are going to cover all the details right now. Make sure to watch until the end to see how this news might impact your case. Also, I spent a lot of time making this video, and I would appreciate if you can like this video and subscribe to my page to help support the growth of my channel. Okay, so what does the Department of State have to say about future movement in the visa bulletin? For those who don't know, every month, the State Department's Bureau of Consular Affairs releases a live stream on YouTube during which they answer questions about the visa bulletin. These events are hosted by Charlie Oppenheim, the chief of the Visa Control and Reporting Division of the Department of State, which is the office responsible for compiling and releasing the visa bulletin every single month. We're going to talk about the visa bulletin in just a second, but let's hear what Charlie has to say. The number one question that the Department of State got this year was whether or not the fiscal year 2021 family-based and employment-based visa limits would be reached. Let's hear Charlie's response. No, we do not believe that based on the implications of the COVID-19 situation and other issues which have impacted processing since October, we do not expect that those limits will be reached. The processing of cases at our overseas posts has resumed in recent months, but we're still not at or, uh, the normal processing levels. And my guess is that the USCIS offices are facing the same processing issues. Unfortunately, U.S. embassies and consulates are not expected to return to their normal levels for processing until next year. So if the employment and family-based preference category limits are not reached this year, what are the expected limits for fiscal year 2022? Let's hear what Charlie has to say. Under the current INA guidelines, we expect that the family-sponsored annual limit will once again be 226,000. It has been that way since about fiscal 2000. Uh, and for the employment-based limit, I now expect that the limit will be at least 290,000 for fiscal 2022. That will be another all-time high in terms of the employment limit. In addition to all-time high employment-based visa numbers, we can also expect to see significant movements and employment dates through the end of summer and the beginning of fiscal year 2022, with the one exception being the fifth preference category for China. So how about family dates? Can we expect to see the same movement along preference categories for family-based cases? The answer was a little bit more complicated. Originally, we had expected the movement of the family dates to have slowed or, uh, or stopped for the summer months. Uh, but based on changing conditions at our overseas posts, which are allowing uh, additional numbers to be utilized, there is an excellent chance that we will be able to continue advancing many of the family dates uh, through the summer. We do expect that many of the family-sponsored final action dates will be held for an extended period of time once our overseas posts do return to completely normal operating status, uh, most likely sometime in next year. And the reason being that the dates that which have already been established uh, that will provide sufficient demand to probably utilize the vast majority of the 2022 numbers, uh, at least in the for the first half of the year, Mm -hmm. uh, potentially moving forward into the second half again. So in terms of family movement of dates, they are likely to stop once overseas processing resumes full operational status. Charlie provided more information than we can cover here. So I will leave a link in my description to the monthly chat with Charlie. Note that if you want to submit a question for Charlie, make sure to email the Department of State at visabulletin at state.gov with the subject line chat with Charlie question. If the visa bulletin is having such a big impact on the visa backlog, 
What is the Department of State going to do about it? On Tuesday, the Bureau of Consular Affairs held a live stream with the Family Visa Expert. It was hosted by Neil Vermillion, the Visa Expert and Division Chief in the Visa Office. Neil has been with the State Department for almost 20 years and is responsible for providing the consular guidance to U.S. embassies and consulates abroad. During this special live stream, he explained what has caused the visa backlog and what the situation is today. So let's hear what he has to say. You know, here we are almost June uh, 2021. Those of you that might follow our immigrant visa processing overseas know we actually shut down due to the pandemic. Uh, visa processing shut down for several months uh, last year at this time. And we really didn't start uh, the reopening process until until July of last year. Then President Trump uh, signed Presidential Proclamation 10014. Uh, which uh, President Biden rescinded in late February of this year. Uh, but that prevented the issuance, even when we were open uh, and our consular sections were processing some visas, um, that prevented the issuance and travel of uh, many, many uh, immigrant visas. Some of you may be aware or seen on our websites, there are actually still in effect uh, geographic proclamations, as we call them, which basically are, again, presidential proclamations that have been issued to uh, help protect the homeland, protect health, uh, protect the security. Currently, there are proclamations in effect that cover 33, 33 countries, which basically say uh, anyone that has been present in any of these 33 countries for the last 14 days uh, can't travel to the United States, and that means we can't issue visas to them. The good news now, just in the last month, however, is that no, none of these proclamations currently stand in the way. If you followed my channel, then all of this should sound familiar to you. You will know that we've discussed these things before. If you are new here, then please consider subscribing to my channel so that you can stay up to date with this type of news. Okay, next. So what is the Department of State going to do about this visa backlog? Neil explained their plan. Honestly, this um, it, keeping everyone informed is part of that effort. Uh, that's one reason why you know we're doing this. Uh, I also want to highlight uh, that we have started posting in the last month and we'll update monthly on our travel.state.gov website, uh, the stats of the immigrant visa backlog. The National Visa Center, the current number of immigrant visa applications that are ready for interviews but not yet scheduled is 481,965. And that's, if you guys think that's a big number, yeah, that is a big number. Um, that's almost a half a million cases. And that frankly is up from 408,255. In terms of what we're doing, we're throwing all available resources that we can in that. And we're specifically telling our counselor sections uh, with respect to visa services, uh, the processing of immigrant visa and fiance visa pro is, is our number one priority. You know, please understand we're continuing to deal with circumstances on the ground that we can talk about as we go through this uh, session and the volume and type of visa cases, you know, will continue to depend on local circumstances. Um, you know, we're doing our best to, to process uh, these applications uh, as much as possible, uh, as, as quickly as possible, and as safely as possible while we protect both our uh, applicants as well as our staff from, um, uh, from the further spread of the pandemic. In my opinion, it sounds like the visa backlog is going to continue to grow and they don't really have much of a plan to address it. As we discussed in a previous video, the Department of State has also released a new prioritization schedule for embassies and consulates to follow in adjudicating visa applications, but this will likely not make much of a dent or a significant impact in the backlog as it exists today. What do you think? Leave me a comment below to let me know how you think the Department of State should be handling this crisis. Neil discussed a lot more than we have time to cover, so if you're interested to hear exactly what he has to say, I'll include a link in the description below. Finally, let's take a look at the June Visa Bulletin to see what sort of movement we can expect to see across the preference categories. Starting with employment-based visas, we saw significant advancement this month across the board. USCIS has instructed applicants to use the final action dates chart for June of 2021, so let's take a look to see what has changed. Again, EB1 has remained current for all chargeability areas. Last month, I predicted that EB2 for China and India would continue to advance significantly throughout the rest of the year, and we definitely saw that this month. EB2 for China moved forward by five months to May 1st, 2017, and for India by four months to December 1st, 2010. All other chargeability areas remain current for this category. 
EV3 also saw significant advancement. Starting with China, EV3 professionals and skilled workers moved forward by three and a half months to September 1st, 2018, and the EV3 other workers category moved by two months to October 1st, 2019. Both EV3 categories for India advanced by 10 months to November 1st, 2011, while all other chargeability areas are current for both EV3 categories. Based on what Charlie said, I predict that we will continue to see that the dates for these EV3 categories will continue moving forward through the summer, though in July there may be slower movement. For the EV4 category, all chargeability areas remain current except for Mexico, where we saw a big jump forward of seven and a half months to November 1st, 2019, and Central America, where we saw an advance of two months to November 1st, 2018. Finally, the EB5 category has all chargeability areas current except for Vietnam, which moved forward two months to April 15, 2018, and China, which was the only employment based category with no movement at all. And while I don't expect that we will see the EB5 date for China advance during the remainder of this fiscal year, I do think we will continue to see the EB5 for Vietnam. Continue to move forward. Moving on to family based visas, we saw slight advancements in all non current final action dates for all categories and all areas. For the F1 categories, China, India, and other countries moved forward 10 days to November 1st, 2014. And while Mexico advanced one month to May 1st, 1998, the Philippines moved forward 21 days to February 22nd, 2012. The F2A category remains current in all chargeability areas. The F2B category moved forward for China, India, and all other countries by one week to August 22nd, 2015. Mexico moved forward 24 days to September 8th, 1999. And the Philippines moved forward one month to October 15, 2011. We had the biggest advancements in the F3 category for Mexico, which advanced one month to November 15, 1996, and the Philippines, which moved forward 38 days to June 8, 2002. China, India, and all other countries moved forward 10 days to September 1, 2008. For family based final action dates, the most significant advancements were in the F4 categories for all chargeability areas. Both China and all other countries moved forward by one month to December 8, 2006. India moved forward 23 days to May 8, 2005. Mexico advanced 24 days to September 1, 1998. And the Philippines moved forward 38 days to June 8, 2002. Next, we have filing dates for family based visa categories. For these dates, we saw some big advancements in the F1 and F2 categories for all chargeability areas, and again this month for the Philippines in every category. Note that with the exception of the F2A category, CIS has instructed applicants to use the dates for filing chart for June 2021. I'm going to cover the areas in which we saw advancement and will pull out dates on the screen for those categories that remain unchanged. For F1 categories of family based visa filing dates, we saw a lot of movement, especially compared to last month. India, China, and all other countries moved forward by five months to March 1st, 2016. While last month the F1 category did not move forward for Mexico at all, this month it advanced by 75 days to May 15, 2000. And the Philippines continues to advance. Moving forward six and a half months to May 15th, 2014. For F2A, all chargeability areas advanced one month to May 1st, 2021. The F2B saw advancements in India, China, and all other countries by nearly two months to August 15th, 2016. And the Philippines moved forward almost seven months to August 1st, 2013. In the F3 categories, China, India, and all other countries advanced by nearly 40 days to August 1st, 2009. And the Philippines advanced 38 days to August 8, 2003. The F4 category only saw advancement in the Philippines, which again advanced 38 days to August 8, 2003. I've included a link in my description below for those of you who want to see the visa bulletin yourself. Have you seen the Department of State's prioritization schedule for embassies and consulates? I'll include a link here for my most recent video where I explain how the schedule works and how visas will be prioritized. I'll also be releasing a video on this topic as soon as we have more information. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not yet done so. Check out this video. I'll see you there.